which is good because I have a promoted challenge here for Kathleen Tells Her Story. <laughs> and I famously never get a soapbox or any way to express my deep opinions and feelings at any point ever. Is it once, once a year you actually, people will listen to you. Yeah, once a year, yeah. I, once a year I get a chance to do that. So it's time to tell my story. Is there any expansion to this? No, if that's the entirety of the challenge. So it's important to remember that when you are me, life is very challenging because challenge is more interesting narratively than complacency. Uh, so I've got to start out from a position of uh, a problem. And the biggest problem I have right now is that uh, um, I'm just cold all the time. <laughs> like, you know, it sounds kind of fun in the summertime. You're never sweaty. You know, you don't need to wear, you don't need to launder a shirt immediately after you wear it. You know, you don't need to buy any sweat wicking clothing because you don't sweat. Uh, but at the same time, your fingers are numb all the time. Uh, if you spend any time outside and then come inside, then they start to hurt because they warm up too quickly. Oh, that's the worst. And uh, and uh, you know how some people like to buy weighted blankets because it makes them feel relaxed because they have that pressure on them? I have so many blankets on my bed, it's like I have a weighted blanket. Mm. It's just because I have like several different layers on top. Um, and the real problem with that is, is it's actually very hard for me to move around in bed because there's so many blankets on it. And uh, recently, Baxter has taken to sleeping on my legs, which is fine because he's warm. Mm -hmm. But Finnegan, our other cat who's new, wants to be with Baxter. And Finnegan wants to sleep beside Baxter. But Baxter does not want Finnegan to sleep beside him. So I get woken up several times a night by two cats having a fight on top of me. <laughs> and occasionally, I don't get woken up by this, and Graham just describes that, I, that there was a cat fight on me at about 3 in the morning. And I apparently made a grunt and rolled over, which is what happened last night. <laughs> so, Amazing. But he certainly got disturbed by it. But Finnegan doesn't know when to leave well enough alone and uh, always comes back to sleep beside Baxter. And I wake up in the morning and uh, they're both there. And I'm like, good boy. And then Baxter is like, mm, good morning. Stretch, realize Baxter's there and just goes. <sighs> <laughs> but in a really lazy way, because he still hasn't fully spooled up yet. <laughs> right, right. He, like he's remembering to be irritated. Yeah, exactly. He's just like, oh, what are, who, what, huh? Oh yeah. <sighs> uh. Yeah. It's it's performative. Yeah. It's it's pro uh, um, um, uh, pro forma. Yeah, I, I don't want to uh, um, put all the blame solely on Baxter for this though, because Finnegan's way of trying to like be friendly with Baxter is to walk up to him and then grab him and try to bite him about the neck and head. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing, but Baxter does not like that. Because Baxter is, uh, if there was any animal that would most identify with the vibe of Alpha Flight, it's definitely Baxter. Mm. Yep. We took Baxter to the vet recently. I'm just killing time till other people get back. We took, we took our cat Baxter to the vet recently um, because he just seemed really off. He was like grooming himself a lot and he was like sleeping in weird places. And we were like really worried about him. And so we paid for like almost $500 worth of tests to see what was going on. And the official, um, the official verdict back from the vet was, he's fine. Did something startle him? <laughs> 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 so, yeah, yeah, you know that sounds that sounds about right. Yeah, I right. guess he was like watching a bird, and the bird got too close and gave him a little fright or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can always tell when there's birds outside of my window, even before I hear or see them, mm -hmm. because my cat will run straight over to the balcony door. Oh. Does she, uh, she? Or does your cat chatter at the birds? No, like, she get... just sits there and watches them. Mm. Yeah, when. I lived back in Prince George. We had a purebred Burmese cat named Lily, mm -hmm. who was uh, sable, which is like very, very dark brown. Um, and she would try to stalk crows across the lawn, and the crows would just stare at her the entire time, <laughs> being like, you can't possibly be, are you seeing this? <laughs> right? And she's like, so stealthy. And we'd have to go out and get her. <laughs> Speaking of very good cats, Dan Wu, our PR coordinator for this year, 
uh, has uh, has has a cat that lives next door to him. According to uh, according to uh, Dan, this is Buddy, and Buddy is one of several feral cats that live next door to their house, uh, him and his uh, wife's house, and uh, they are attempting to rehabilitate him to make him into a house cat. So here are some photos of Buddy. Aww. Buddy is such a cutie. Aw, hey Buddy. Yeah. I love Buddy. Oh what! Oh, that's such a! I love a good fluffy cat. Yeah, he's he's a he's an outdoorsy boy, but Aww. he one day, if you keep feeding him and loving him, he'll be an indoorsy boy. Mm -hmm. I can fix him. <laughs> well, make sure he's well nourished and goes to the vet if he gets injured. I.e., fixing him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting him fixed. Yeah. I meant. <laughs> Actually, yeah, feral cats are a real problem. Get your cats spayed and neutered. <laughs> this. PSA brought to you by the, the ghost of Bob Barker, who's yep. still alive? No. So the actual legitimate ghost of Bob Barker. Yes. Mm. Um, yes, also do yourself a favor and get your cats fixed because there's no sound in the world worse than a yowling cat in heat. Yeah, there's, oh. a, there's a cat in my neighborhood or possibly within about 10 kilometers <laughs> of my house in the morning who is on Tinder <laughs> loudly every morning. Whoa, Bob Barker is still alive. He's 98 years old. Oh, really? Wow. Exercise, being kind to animals, and eating a vegetarian diet, I believe. Oh, wow. Um, I... 98 was... is still clobbering Adam Sandler in our hearts. <laughs> Bob Barker was the mm. best part of that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The price is wrong. <laughs>